there are a wide range of places where green chemical design has taken place. This is just a, a small sampling, and I'll try to talk through just a few of them before we, um, as we wrap up. This is <coughs> called C9. It's an, uh, an anti-fouling. It's a marine pesticide. There used to be a company based in Philadelphia called uh, the Roman Haas Company, since been bought out by Dow. Okay, so an antifoulant is something that you put on the bottom of a boat. You can also use it for uh, other things, such as uh, cooling pipes, et cetera, et cetera. But basically, you want to get rid of things like algae or seaweed or barnacles and diatoms. The cost of scraping the ship, the, uh, if, uh, if those things accumulate, the cost of it being out of service just builds up. Um, and so the idea of needing um, antifoulants is, is important. So whether it's the amount of fuels uh, that you use, the greenhouse gases, um, all of those associated with the, the use of those fuels, it all adds up. Um, the way that the foulants are applied is you blend it with the, the ship paint, and then the, uh, the, the foulants are supposed to kill the barnacles of the seaweed um, as they try to attach uh, and slowly leach to the surface in order to, um, to, to form the, a layer or a zillion or a resistant layer. This has been the dominant uh, antifoulant for many, many, many decades. Uh, tributyl tin oxide. Um, kind of like a spider. So its half-life in seawater is about six months. So just the bioconcentration factor is 10 to the fourth. Now the chronic toxicity of, is of concern, whether it's um, what it does to uh, sea walks, oyster shells, uh, snails, higher mammals um, such as dolphins and whales. Uh, there has been concern known for quite some time. It was banned by Japan, I'm guessing because they care for the whales, uh, and by the uh, International Maritime Organization um, and, and O3. So what would you want to have for an ideal uh, antifoulant. You want it to degrade rapidly, non-hazardous in environmental conditions, limited bioavailability, uh, av toxic only to target or organisms, minimum bioconcentration, right? So this is what was invented by uh, Roman Haas. Uh, and this won the Presidential Green Chemistry Challenge Award uh, a number of years ago. Um, so this is the 4,5-dichloro. Um, 2N octal isothiazolone alone, we'll call it DCOI, okay? The, the good news about this is it, um, while it is, and this is an important distinction, it is acutely lethal to those things that it wants to kill. So the reason that I chose this example is because there are times when your function is to eliminate algae, seaweed, barnacles, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this actually is acutely lethal uh, to those target organisms. So pesticides in general are by definition uh, lethal to something. But it uh, has no chronic toxicity, uh, very small half-life, half-life is uh, less than an hour, uh, bioconcentration rather than 10,000 is uh, 13 by comparison. And partitioning to the uh, sediment, which means low bioavailability. And this is just the breakdown process of the uh, DCOI and dramatically different toxicity profile, um, the, the difference between the predicted environmental concentration and the no effect uh, concentration.